React Router 7 is just around the corner and with it come new improvements. One of the biggest improvements of the lot is the fact that React Router 7 is finally getting type safety. What does this mean? Well, let's talk about it. If we go over to the changelog for the React Router pre-release, at the time of filming it's pre-release 0 and there's bound to be bugs. So take all of this with a grain of salt, it will probably change before we actually see the stable release. And when I say change, I mean for the better, where we will probably see some bugs fixed and squashed, type safety improved and developer experience enhanced. Alright, so let's go over it and see how it works. Now that we have that out of the way, I gotta say, this is brilliant. I know that you don't understand why, I'm gonna show you through the video, but I just love how they did type safety in React Router 7. As you can see in the first sentence, React Router now generates types for each of your route modules and passes type props to route module component exports. And you can access those types by importing them from types dot something. So why is this cool? If you look at the code snippet here, you can see that everything is imported as a route from plus types dot product. And then you can use this route module here to type your loaders, your components and everything else. At the time of filming, this only supports loaders, client loaders, actions, client actions, hydrate fallback, component, error boundary, and that's it. In the future, we will get type safety for everything, and this is probably gonna work 10 times better, but at the time of filming, it has some restrictions. So why is this cool? Well, first of all, they typed the params finally. Which means when you have a search param, if you're on a wildcard route, for example, user slash user ID, the user ID is going to exist there out of the box. You're not gonna have to cast it to a string. React Router 7 will be smart enough to tell you, okay, you're on this route, it exists. Then the second cool thing is, if you use Remix extensively, you'll probably know that sometimes if you use loaders plus client loaders, you can end up in a scenario where you type the use loader data as type of loader. And then what happens is you run your client loader on hydration or you run it later on and the types return from client loader maybe don't match and you forgot to rename the type of loader in the use loader data hook and the code doesn't complain it's quote unquote type safe but it fails because you send different data from the client loader instead of the loader or the same scenario can happen with actions and client actions. So the cool thing about the new type system is that React Router will be smart enough to automatically detect your exports from your route and type your components to receive the loader data and the action data as they're supposed to be. And you won't have to do anything yourself, you won't have to do any code changes. React Router will do everything for you behind the scenes. And as you can already see in the future they plan to add support for meta links headers should revalidate and so on and they also plan to make links type safe use navigate and stuff like that but that's all planned for the future maybe it comes out after the video so i look stupid but for now we don't have that yet but it's planned so if you go to the setup the first thing you can see is that you add dot react router to your git ignore and then after that we add type gen command to our package json so here in the scripts we say react router type gen and then we add the root directories into rts config json and then we just run the command and we're good to go and they also have a typescript plugin that's used to regenerate your types and in the future they plan to add a lot of other stuff like automatic js doc generation autocomplete for route exports warnings for non-hmr compliant exports and so on and so forth and that's everything there is and that's all the info at the moment provided by the changelog but let's dive a little deeper so how does this work actually well i think a lot of this came as inspiration from the 10 stack router and if you visit their website you'll immediately see that one of their main selling points is type safe and powerful yet familiarly simple 10 stack router was the first quote unquote react router to actually add type safety into routing so huge shout out to the 10 stack team and Tanner who actually pioneered this and the approach is kind of different but that doesn't matter for now as we're gonna focus on React Router and how React Router does it. So if we go back here the first thing we need to do is add .react router to get you know. and why is that? So if I switch to VS Code 
I've set up a repository that uses React Router 7 with the type gen. And as you can see here, I've added .react router to the root of my project. And I'm gonna delete these types here. And I'm actually gonna delete the whole folder. I brought up a new terminal and I'm gonna run npm run type gen. And just for reference, I've added the type gen command here and it runs React Router type gen. And as you can see, we get a bunch of output into the dot react router types. And you can see that first of all, it has types dot root, and then it has a folder called routes. And inside of it has a bunch of types dot route name. So what's going on here? Before we go into what's going on, just a small segue that in the routes dot ts, I use the flat routes from react router file system routes, so I can get the file system convention that's used in remix version two today. And all my routes are picked up from the app slash routes folder and they use the v2 convention from remix and that's important thing to note so back to our folder called dot react router because we've added it to our git ignore here as you can see it's not pushed to git and the reason behind this is so you can use types in local development without actually pushing the types to a repository if for some reason you want it on a repository you can just remove this line and push it but considering it's used in local development that's why it's there and now that the folder is ignored we can safely use it to type our routes but how do we type the routes so if i open up root tsx here if you look here you can see that i import everything as a route from types.root but how does this work because here on the left you can see that i have the root tsx but i have no plus types.root.tsx file here and yet typescript is not complaining well this is where root directory's tsconfig option comes in if i go to my tsconfig you can see here that i've defined root directories the first one is this root right here and the second one is the react router slash types and if i go up and open up the types here you can see that the types folder that's defined here mimics the folder structure of our app so what does this mean so if you look at the app folder here, it mimics this folder, the routes here mimic this folder, and then all the types generated by React Router mimic the actual files that are located in your routes here. And this would work for any sort of routing convention. It doesn't really matter what the routing convention is. It's gonna work out of the box. So how does this work actually? Well, it all comes down to this little cool trick here. If I switch over to the browser, and we go to the TypeScript documentation, we can find what the root directory's config actually does. And what it does is, it informs the compiler that there are many virtual directories acting as a single root. So what does this mean? This means, if for example, let's say you have a project, and then inside of it you have a routes folder, and then inside of those routes you have your index.tsx file, maybe user.tsx, Login TSX and so on and so forth. You can tell TypeScript, okay, there exists another virtual directory, and this virtual directory has the same structure as the actual one. And what you can do is you can import from the virtual directory into the index.tsx file. But what else you can do is you can import from the actual directory into the virtual directory. So it works both ways. You can either import something from here into here or the other way around. And TypeScript doesn't care if this virtual directory actually exists at runtime because you don't use TypeScript at runtime anyways. It just assumes it's gonna exist there and it's really up to you to take care of it. And because we don't really import any code but we import types only, we don't really need it to exist at runtime. We just need the types locally in development to get it to work. So these two can import directly from one another as if they were co-located and and how that would work is basically if you had this index tsx and if it was located right next to the original index tsx that's in the actual repository so what does this mean for us if i switch back to the editor here keeping in mind what i just explained this types dot index dot ts in the react router here is treated 
as if it was here. So as if it was located here, but it's not, it's located in the virtual directory, which is the one above here. And it doesn't need to be generated and imported into your actual code base. It just exists as a virtual ghost directory located in the repository that's used in development time. So why is this so cool? It's cool because it works both ways. And if I go to index, you can see I imported from here as if it was located one next to each other and this imports the types but the types import everything from the module and as you can see the path is relative here again and TypeScript is smart enough to know if I'm importing this here I need to resolve it from the actual repository that's the index file here and in the index file if I import this TypeScript says okay I will import the types from the virtual repository and what this allows React Router to do is it imports the route as a type from here in a single line of code and what this does is is basically like doing something like this so importing the, the loader, the action and everything. But this here imports the whole module and then you can do all sorts of magic with it. For example, you can see here that the loader data is just passed to the create loader data. And this behind the scenes then says, okay, and don't be scared by this code. This is like bunch of if checks, but with types. And this checks, for example, does the module have a client loader? Does it have a loader? If it has this, type it like this. If it has something else, type it like this. And all of this allows the React Router team to type everything for you. And you don't have to do anything. You just import the type and use it. So if I go back here, you can see that, for example, it exports the loader arguments, the client loader arguments, the component props and everything. So if I go back to the actual route, I import the type route or you could just import specific ones, for example, component props and then just type it like this. It's really up to you. I reverted it because I wanted it to be a little bit more similar to the docs. And then if I go to a route, for example, that has params, so for example, this sitemap.lang has a lang param. I can, instead of doing loader function arguments, do route.loader arguments. And now if I hover over the lang, it's a string. It's not undefined anymore. So let's do that again. I reverted to loader function arguments. I hover over this, it's string or undefined. I change it to route loader arguments. I hover over this, it's a string. So that's the cool thing about the new type safety system. And check this out. So if I go to root here, I again import the types from root. And now the cool thing that I can do is, first of all, I can type the route loader arguments here. And now in the route component props, I just get the loader data. And if I hover over it, it's exactly what's returned from the loader. And I have nothing to do with the types. I just import them, type everything for myself, and I'm good to go. And now I can extract the values I need from the loader data and use them in my project. And for example, let's say I had an action here. I also get action data that's typed. I can also get the params, which in this case do nothing, but it's a cool thing to know. And that's it. I just got full type safety. And I just want to shout out Pedro. He is the guy who implemented all of this. I think this is a really elegant way of doing this. The code itself is pretty simple. As you saw already, it's like a 20 lines of code file that just passes the types into some custom types that extract the right things. It's all done automatically. It's all done for you. You have nothing to do but enjoy your development experience and generally your life. You can just go touch grass. You don't really have to pull your hair out because of serialization types and React Router 7 is going to be awesome. And the last thing I want to show you is if I go to my TS config here, I also define a React Router plugin here. And this plugin is going to do a lot of things for you. It's going to regenerate your types. It's going to create JS docs. It's going to be able to tell you, hey, this can't be HMR, hey, this is not a valid export. When you use a TypeScript plugin, you can extend the TypeScript behavior and specialize it for your code base. And this 
is one of the many reasons I think that the future of React Router 7 and all the other versions moving forward is gonna be bright. They just get out of your way, give you the code, go build your apps and ship it to your two users. All right, and that's about it. I have covered everything you need to know about how type safety works in React Router 7. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Like I said, keep in mind, this is still work in progress. It's bound to have bugs. I actually found some, but I'm pretty sure by the time React Router 7 is out, it's all gonna be ironed out. The developer experience is gonna be awesome. And we're going to build a new generation of web applications. I'm looking forward to being a part of this journey and I've loved Remix ever since version one. And I think the React Router Remix Reverb, whatever Shopify theme is really changing the landscape and I really trust them to make this great. All right, and now all the common YouTube stuff, like the video, share it with others, let me know what you think in the comments, show it to your dog, show it to your bird, to your cat, tell your wife why you're excited about this and listen to her complain that you're obsessed with work. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.